Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and I have here to look at a Mercedes Vito with a DPF error on it and this has been to another DPF cleaner they've cleaned it but the light's still on and they can't clear the error we've also got another Renault traffic over there that we're doing but I'm not going to video that one we've done enough of those let's have a look at this get inside and we have exhaust filter high engine speed engine management light is on okay so i'm using my launch on the vivaro here that i'm doing so we'll we'll use this one for today it's still a handy little tool it's the auto fix uh, always have a couple of different brand of tools that i'll uh, keep with me just in case one has connectivity issues with with a certain vehicle uh we're doing a full scan here see what fault codes we have so it's just going to run through random parts of the vehicle and give them a test we can actually just pause this now because we are just looking at the engine itself so that's the only area we want to look at uh, let's see what fault codes we have P246B09 and we have a P246392 regeneration not fulfilled the soot content of the particle filter is not okay so the regeneration not fulfilled could could mean a number of things it could mean that it uh, has always been switched off before the regeneration was complete or it's been doing regenerations but the pressure hasn't been coming down where it needed to be so I don't know at the minute if this other place has tried to clean it and the cleaning pressure has just hasn't come down and I don't know if they've done a good job of doing the clean I don't know what they've used so I'm just gonna start from scratch uh, we'll go to the live data exhaust system Diesel particulate filter. We have soot grams of 45.8, 14 millibars of pressure or HPA, the same, so it's in the red. That should only be at somewhere between sort of 2 to 6 millibars, really. Um, but obviously, on this machine, it's saying it should be below 12, but 12 is the absolute max, really. If you've, got, if you've got a DPF that's idling at 12, you're going to be regenerating every sort of 50 miles. So, let's we'll see. I don't know if we've got any regeneration information on here. Vehicle mileage. No, it doesn't give me the information of when it was last regened or how often it's been regenerating. I'll have a look in another couple of places just to confirm. But the after treatment, I'm sure, is going to be just the AdBlue system. If it's got, yeah, NOx sensors and stuff like that. Okay, so we're going to go back from there. And yes, and we have here history of regeneration. Don't know why I didn't see that. It's got its own separate module for it. Ignition on with engine off is what's needed here. That's it. So we're in green. We'll click that. Okay, so. Seven kilometers, twenty nine grams, twenty nine point six, twenty eight point six. So it's, it looks like it's been trying to do a regeneration, which would suggest that the DPF is just uh, beyond repair, really. I've got something over here that says combustion misfires, but we haven't got any sort of fault for that. Cause of termination of the regeneration: combustion misfires. Well, that is. Evaluation of the value reader. F1 information of the, on the possible causes of activation. So these are all the reasons that it could have failed the region, basically. Now if the regeneration is taking too long, that would suggest that the DPF is just knackered and it it can't uh, regenerate 
combustion engine was switched off okay so it's strange that we have a fault there saying that it had a misfire combustion misfire but we don't have I mean it's got a a cause of termination there saying that but we don't have any misfire faults logged in the engine and I don't know it looks to me like the DPF on this is beyond repair but I don't know if it's worth trying trying to clean this or not shall we do it shall we just clean the DPF just for um, what's the word uh, I have to adjust my thinking cap experiment that's the word I was looking for ah, look what engine it is Vauxhall Vivaro engine it looks very familiar to this one and there you go it's the same engine okay I've removed the oxygen sensor this one we've got our cleaning kit hooked up which is the launch UK DTF cleaning fluid which has been a Renault engine we're just checking that the upstream pressure is rising and dropping at a decent rate which looks okay the upstream pressure or exhaust back pressure sensor to Mercedes is this one right here okay we're gonna squeeze the trigger get all of this fluid in some of it is coming out there gonna get this one in with the engine running okay now we've got the fluid in there we're just gonna hold the revs up 3000 rpm now one thing I will mention as well I don't know if I made it clear on the last one but whoever cleaned the DPF before I do know who it was it's a um, a, a, a big one of the biggest cleaning DPF cleaning companies in the UK basically but I'm not going to mention names after they cleaned it they could not get the light to go off so they couldn't even reset it whatsoever um, so I'm not sure if that was part of the problem even but we'll see if we can get it reset in a minute that's why I carry sort of four or five different diagnostic machines okay now that we've re we've uh, cleared some of the soot what we're going to do is this for the live data you know we don't want to look at the live data I want to go back and do some resets on the DPF so we can take it for a drive and hopefully get this DPF cleaned down teach in process you see I could have tried to do this before instead of wasting my DPF clean but I don't want to reset the DPF if it is blocked with soot because it's not good to do that Teach in a used DPF filter. Teach in a diesel. I'm not sure what teaching in the used one does, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this one. This is what I normally do. Okay, so that was done successfully, so it says. Now that that's done successfully, we should be able to come back to the fault codes and clear them. I'll see the exhaust backer pressure sensor I was having a look at that to make sure it wasn't blocked so I did it disconnected so that's why we've got a fault there for that now we're gonna clear that no fault codes detected so now we should have that filter light go, go away doesn't look like it has so far so I'm just gonna take it on a drive cycle hopefully this sign should now go away the engine management light has gone I can see by looking at the exhaust temperature we are we're at 625 degrees so it is doing a regen as we drive here so as I suspected that uh, warning light has gone away and I can see now this vehicle has only done 43,000 miles actually it looks like that was the trip meter I was looking at yeah it's only done 22,367 miles Okay, so test drive done, vehicle is now idling and we have between 6 to 7 pressure. You can see the grams of soot have come down to 1.3. Um, yeah, so it's all good. Now, like I said before, there, there, there was some data in the DPF saying that it possibly had a injection um, misfire. There's no fault code for that and there wasn't any here. So, I will keep an eye on that. I'm not going to start pulling these injectors out if I don't see an immediate fault with them. The vehicle is idling perfectly fine. There's no misfire. There's no fault codes there for misfires. So, in the future, if any of these errors come back, 
then we may look at the, the fuel injectors but I don't always trust what these diagnostic tools say you can't always just rely on them so as far as I'm concerned I'm pretty sure this DPF is now going to be okay so that's it we're all finished on the Mercedes Vito I'm happy that it's all well and good and then we have that Renault traffic over there to deal with so I'll see you on our next video